Hey everyone, it's Melissa Fabiano. Today I want to show you one of my all-time favorite seated hip openers. And this does a really great job of targeting the outer hips. So no, I'm not going to lead you through pigeon. Um, this again, it takes place seated. You don't really need a prop or anything, but if you happen to conveniently have a block handy like I do, <laughs> grab that. Or you can use a book or something with some structure. Otherwise, you can totally do this without any props. So get into a seated position, cross leg, and then you're going to take, I'll start with my right knee on top. I'm going to take my right knee and I'm going to stack it directly on top of my left knee. So it's one straight line, knee over knee. And your feet are going to be obviously out to the sides. The closer you bring your feet into your body, the easier it will be. The further away your feet are from your body, so push out maybe towards the front of your mat or the front of the room the harder it will be. So depending on your flexibility, just make sure your feet are lined up. But if you push your feet out far, make sure they're in one line. So you don't want them like all staggered and stuff like that. Keep them in one line so it's even on the hips. So if you have a block handy, you're gonna wanna bring it in front of you. So to get started, you'll just bring your hands behind you on the floor. Inhale, gaze up, open through your chest, and you'll notice your butt kind of drops down onto the mat. So you wanna to try to keep both sit bones firmly rooted down. And then from here, you're simply just gonna to start to hinge from the waist forward over your hips and you'll instantly feel a hip stretch. Trust me, <laughs> if you're doing it along with me, you probably feel it right now. So you can start to now bring your hands out in front of you. Walk your hands forward and then if you don't have a block, You'll just keep walking your hands forward to the degree that you feel sensation in your hips. And then you'll just let your head fall down. Now where the block comes in, if you have it, this makes it a little bit more restorative. You can either bring your block to the mat, the long ways, and then you'll rest your forehead on it as you reach your hands forward. Or you can put the block on your knee and then just let your head fall heavy like that. <laughs> So there's just different options depending on how flexible you are. I like to hold it for at least 10 breaths. I know that might sound like a lot, but hip openers, they're like the love-hate thing. You gotta, you gotta do them and you gotta hold them to really get the benefit of the pose. So to get out of it, you'll bring your hands behind you and then I just switch my feet like a little magic trick. I'm just kidding. But so again, now you'll bring your left knee over your right adjust your feet, make sure your sit bones, your butt is flat on the mat. You don't want to be off to one side. Adjust your feet as you need to. Sit up nice and tall first and then hinge forward. So again, it's important to keep initially the spine straight, the crown of the head reaching out, and then you'll feel that sensation. Once you find the degree that feels like the good stretch for you, then you can let the head melt into the mat or towards the mat. Whether you use your block or not, just hold it for about 10 breaths. When you feel like you got a good hip stretch, walk yourself out, undo the pose. I like to counter it with a forward fold, and then that's it. You'll notice, again, a nice stretch, a nice sensation in those hips, and it's so healthy. I know sometimes hip poses literally are a pain, but they're so good for you. Um, so give this pose a try. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time. Have a good day.